Hi everyone, it's Nick. Now, I think we've all had one of those clear nights under the stars where everything has gone wrong, or you have an unexpected clear night and you try getting set up and in rushing around to do everything without being prepared for it, you've gotten yourself into a bit of a mess. I know I've certainly been there. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my process for making sure that I'm always prepared for a clear night of astrophotography. Now be sure to leave some of your tips in the comments down below to help beginners out in this hobby and let's jump straight into it with the thing that I always try and do first and that is to make sure that I get set up as early as possible and that means trying to get set up in the daytime. Now that does get harder as the nights draw in. We're in the middle of November now so here in the UK it's dark before five o'clock so if you're trying to image after work then it, it does get harder but especially in, in the summer months getting set up as early as possible just means that you're not sort of doing everything in the dark. And I just find that as I've made my rig more complex over time, getting set up earlier just means that I can iron out any issues that might arise while I'm getting set up before it gets dark and I start eating into my imaging time. The next thing that I do to always be prepared is I regularly look at Stellarium just to have a look at what objects are currently in the night sky that I can image if there's a clear night coming up in the next couple of weeks. That way I always know that when I get set up what targets I've got to choose from and I'm not stood there at the time eating into my imaging time again thinking about what is it that I'm going to image tonight. And the great thing about Stellarium or other online resources is that you can put in your specific equipment and therefore you can see how the target will look within your field of view so that you'll know whether it's too big or too small or if you might need to do a mosaic or something like that to get everything in the frame. But knowing what you're able to image in advance just means that you're able to perhaps get set up in the right position in your garden if you've got some you know, obstacles that you need to get over like somebody's house and you know, a neighbor's roof, something like that. And while you're checking for your targets in Stellarium, it's a good idea just to make sure that you've got the meridian line turned on so that you know whether or not in advance you'll need to carry out a meridian flip during the middle of your session or during some part of your session. Now, with more complex rigs, you can automate a meridian flip, but I know that a lot of people are a bit nervous to just sort of go to bed or whatever and let the rig do an automatic flip in case of any cable snags or anything like that. So it's just a good idea to know whether or not you'll need to do a flip while you're imaging and then for might need to plate solve afterwards or something like that to make sure that everything is still in the same field of view. The good thing about getting set up early is that you can take your calibration frames before you actually start imaging. And this is a really good idea. If you're a little bit lazy like me, then doing my calibration frames beforehand, I find much better rather than then trying to do it again the next day when all I want to do is get all of my images onto my laptop so that I can start the stacking process. So if you've got a dedicated cooled AstroCam like I have now with the ZWO 533, then you can take darks at whatever time you like, as long as you have the obviously correct dark uh, conditions. Um, because the camera is cooled, you don't need to worry about the temperature matching or, or anything like that. So you can take darks whenever and flats again you can take them whenever if you've got a light panel or something like that so just getting that out of the way before imaging starts is always a good idea and then when the imaging has finished and the next day you could just crack on with stacking your images and not having to worry about taking your calibration frames and at that point you might accidentally if you, you know if you bring your rig in and then take it back out or something like that then you risk knocking the focus or something like that and then your calibration frames won't match the rig as it was set up at the time. And the last one is really obvious, but checking the weather seems like such a stupid thing to say, but the amount of times I can't tell you that I've been looking on various apps, you know, the weather app that's built into an iPhone, the Met Office app here in the UK, the Windy app, there's also Clear Outside from First Light Optics as well. You look across all of these apps and they might all say that it's cloudy outside, and then I step outside to let Hugo out or something like that and I realise that it's actually completely clear outside and I could have been imaging but everything was telling me that it's cloudy. You can also have the opposite problem where everything tells you that it's clear and you go to set up and it's cloudy. What I'm saying is you can't beat just going outside and actually checking the weather with your eyes. Again, I'm a bit lazy so if I'm sat on the sofa after a long day of work 
and everything tells me that it's cloudy, then I tend to believe it, to be honest. But that's just a little tip for you. Let me know if there's anything that you want to add to this list by commenting down below. I thought I'd just make this quick video with a couple of useful tips for beginners, and I hope that you find that useful. If you want to check out this video here about mistakes that beginner astrophotography makes, then go ahead and click into that. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one.